Okay, so in this section, we're going to be talking about the Layers panel in a bit more depth. We're also going to talk about where you may want to divide objects in different layers and what's the difference between layers and sublayers in Illustrator. Now, Illustrator's layer system is pretty nice for organization. Also, depending on what your output is, it can be important on how you divide your assets through your layers. But it's not the, quite the same as if you're working with a pixel-based software where layers help prevent graphics from kind of cannibalizing each other. In a pixel document like Photoshop, if you were to draw a square and then draw a circle on top of it and it's on the same layer, whatever square was behind that circle, if any, is gone. It's gone forever. It's essentially the same as deleting it or erasing it or painting on top of an old painting. Your old painting is gone. Now in Illustrator, you can always lift the object off and put it onto another layer. That's not a problem. Now over here I have layer one and I'm going to draw three rectangles and you can't see any of them because I have a white fill and no stroke. So let's select them all. They're all here and I'm just going to click on this little white and black squares on the bottom left. That just means going back to default. White fill, black stroke. Then I'm going to go inside and I'm going to pick a color. There we go. Let's make this one blue and let's make this one green. So a little bit easier to distinguish. There we go. So we have three rectangles. Green is in front, blue is in the middle, and pink is in the back. Now why did that happen like that? I had drawn pink first, then blue, then green. It's kind of like when you're putting objects on a pizza. You put the sauce down first, and then you put the cheese on it. The cheese is going to cover the sauce. Then you put your pepperonis on it. If you had put your pepperonis down first, and then you put your sauce, your sauce has covered your pepperonis. Now you can always change the layer order in a few different ways. Now all these are on the same layer, but again, the objects are preserved just fine. There's no problem with having things overlap. Now you can go to Object Arrange uh, Send Backwards to bring something back, and it'll go back one. If you go and hit it again, it'll go back by two. So in this case, it'll go all the way to the end because we only have three objects. If I take the green uh, rectangle and I go to Object Arrange Bring to Front, it'll pop all the way to the front. You can also use the command square bracket keys to the right of the P key on the keyboard to usher them forward and back. Now another option, over here under layer one, uh, I have a little arrow to the left of it. If I click on it, it'll show all the sub layers that make up that layer. So I have the green, the blue, and the pink. And I can left mouse down and drag to change their order. Now again, these are all considered part of the same layer. Now some documents or some exports, if you need to be able to have the layers separated in order for the objects to be manipulated independently, such as if you're creating a puppet for After Effects, Anything that's going to move independently needs to be divided into its own layers. So we don't always want to have everything on the same layer. Or if we're using something as a reference, and then you go and you put your drawing on top of it on the same layer, and now you, get, you need to get rid of your reference, but now your reference is covered by your drawing. It gets hard to try to grab it. So that can be another reason why you may want to have multiple layers. Uh, you also might want to be able to isolate parts of your image at a time. Maybe you're doing an effect to it that you don't want to do to your other graphics. Not that you can't isolate them on the same layer, but it gets a little harder. So if I wanted to, let's say I'm going to create a new layer, and I'm going to make another rectangle. And let's color this orange. There we go. Now if I were to take this orange rectangle, and I'm on a new layer, I'm going to go to Object Arrange, send it back. Nothing. Nothing happens. Because the arrange settings, the bring forward, bring to back, that is only in reference to sublayers. It does not affect your overall layers. So orange can't go behind anything else. That can be a good thing, because then you can just focus on little bits at a time. Now if I did want to move the orange behind the other graphics, then I would have to take the orange layer, left mouse down and drag behind, or drag underneath. Now you do find that when, as I drag it, you can get a line, like a thick line, above or below the layer that I'm trying to place it at. Or it can highlight. Now if it highlights over and I let go, I've actually placed the orange inside. Now that being said though, the orange layer is still a layer. 
It's not considered a sublayer, even though it's being treated as a sublayer with the others. I can just pull it out. It's almost like grouping. It's basically grouping it when I do this. That can actually be helpful too, because I can create, let's say I move this over, I can create another layer, and then I can select my other two layers, left mouse down and drag inside. And then I can close it if I want to, but I do have these individual layers. Now we do have to be careful because again, depending on your output, this could throw off the other program that you're working with. Again, if you're working with After Effects, that would, After Effects would think, oh, okay, you just have one layer if I did this. But if you're working, let's say, with just Illustrator and you're working with, let's say, the head of a figure, head of a character, and you want the whole head, including all of the features, the hair, the back of the hair, the ears, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, you can have that inside of a large layer. And then you can have each individual section be its own layer inside of another layer, like kind of docked inside. And that way you still have, you can have the organization, you can also close it when you're done. Because it's common that you might be working on a file that has lots of layers. Even in here, where layers are more of an organizational thing, you're still likely going to run into tons of layers in your future. Now let's say I don't want to accidentally, uh, let's say I'm clicking around, and I don't want to move the, we'll just say the orange rectangle. I'm happy with the placement of the orange rectangle. I do not want to move it. Now one thing that I could do is I could hit the eyeball, and then it's not going to move. It's not going to be interacted with in any way. And it keeps it out of the way while I work on everything else. But maybe I need that orange rectangle to be there. Maybe it's a visual cue for me or a guide that I'm using to help with the rest of my illustration. And without it, I can't quite finish it the way that I could if I had that as a reference. Uh, so if I want it to be visible, but I want it to just stay still, stay put, don't, don't move. I can go to this little blank box to the right of the eyeball, and that is the lock. If I click on the lock, I can't do anything with it. I can click behind it and grab anything that's on another layer, but I can't grab it. It is no longer accessible. If I ever want to unlock it, I can just toggle the lock again and it'll, it'll be able to be manipulated again without any trouble. If you ever want to pull out your layers from a grouped, you know, group layer, you can just, you literally can just pull them out. Now let's say you have these sub layers. So I have these sublayers. Let's say I want to take blue and I want blue to be its own layer. If I left mouse down and drag it out, see that I can't. I get a little cancel sign. I could drag it into another layer. So now they're both here. But I can't make it its own thing. Now let's say I want it to be its own thing. Like this, this rectangle needs to be in its own layer by itself. I didn't mean for it to not be, to not be alone. I want it to just be alone. Then all you have to do is you can select on the drawing, hit Command X or Control X for cut, or you can go to Edit Cut, and then you can go to a new layer, layer four. Let me close these. Now, if I hit Paste, Command V, that places your object in the center. So if I cut again, paste, right in the center. Now let's say I had it down here, and that's where I want it to be. I want it to be there when I'm pasting. What you could do is hit Edit, now there's paste in front, paste in back, paste in place. So paste in place, it's there. Uh, I'm going to move this back. Let's cut, and I'm going to put it back in the layer one, where the green and the pink, let's make orange go away, with green and pink. And I want blue to be right here. So I'm going to cut it again. And I'm going to go to edit, and I can do paste in front, which automatically puts it in front of everything. Honestly, paste in place and paste in front kind of behave the same, because paste in place usually puts it in front too. But paste in back will also paste it in place, but this time put it behind. Uh, the hotkey for pasting in place is the Command Shift V or Control Shift V. And then if you wanted to move it, you can also just grab the sub layers and change their arrangement that way. But that way, if you're trying to work very quickly and you know the hotkeys or you know the commands, you can just boom, put it. And you know you want to be at the very back or you want to be the very front or you want to make sure it's in place. I, do, I use paste in place all the time because usually I'm trying to reorganize layers and I don't want everything to pop right in the center. Sometimes I do or sometimes I don't care where it is because I have more that I need to do with it. But that way we have some more options. So that is 
working with the layers in Illustrator.